Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to game 39 of the regular season. The Foxes are going to be taking on the Philosophers. Philosophers are 19 and 18, while the Foxes are 24 and 14. Warren Griffith is going to be the starting pitcher for the Philosophers with a 3 and 3 record, 5.8 ERA, and a 1.62 whip. Going to be taking on James Davenport for the Foxes. Has a 6 and 2 record, 2.69 ERA, and a 0 0.96 whip. Looking to continue his dominance this season as we go and take a look at the lineup for today's game we have austin bostain batting first larry smith batting second magic richardson batting third josephus mcguffin batting fourth brandon soto batting fifth hoya neat batting sixth alex tyler batting seventh dan owens batting eighth and eddie robles will be batting ninth as we get right into today's game welcome ladies and gentlemen to beautiful red rock park we got ourselves a lovely Afternoon for some baseball. Got ourselves the Fighting Foxes at home taking on the Philosophers as a lover fervor is going to lead it off. James Davenport throwing a ball to start today's game. James Davenport has a 2.69 ERA. I believe he leads the team. In ERA as this one is launched high and deep at that short wall. And it's out of here. First batter of the game cranks it oppo on that small wall. That is just very dangerous. It's going to be his third home run and 15th RBI of the season. As Davenport does not want to start the game like that. His ERA goes up to a 2.83 now. Not how you wanted to open up the game. Honestly, it was a great pitch. It's just the fact that he hit it opposite field to that part of the ballpark, which is always dangerous. Even hitters who don't have a lot of power can still crank one out due to how short of a porch it is and also due to the fact that the wall is ridiculously short. Surprisingly, the right fielder couldn't make the catch. I thought he might have been able to. But... Uh, Davenport gets himself two quick outs after giving up that home run as he throws two strikes. He's trying to just quickly get out of this, and he does exactly that. Gets three ground balls after giving up the home run. So hopefully uh, Davenport can just remain locked in for the rest of today's game as he just gives up the one hit, being that leadoff home run. Very unlike Davenport, but it happens from time to time. Griffith is the leadoff, or Griffith is the starting pitcher, my bad, for the Philosophers today. Does not have a very strong ERA. He has a 5.76 with a 1.61 1 whip and uh, 31 strikeouts on the season thus far. He doesn't have a lot of velocity as this one's cranked to left field, and it's not caught by the left fielder. Sticks out his glove, can't make the play as Smith works himself a double for Magic Richardson. He has a 354 average. I believe he leads the league in batting average, if I'm not mistaken, as he gets a little over anxious swinging at the first pitch. Let's see if Larry tries to go to third. There he goes, and he decides he wants to go back. As McGuffin is batting cleanup. Started out the season pretty poorly, but he has been trying lately to... Uh, hit better he's been he's had a couple of clutch situations in a couple games I believe he had a walk off and uh, he's he's been batting better lately so let's see what he can do here he's down in an 0-2 count Inside. see if he can battle back hit this one but caught by Timber Jones just did not get enough of it to hit it over the shortstop as the Foxes leave a runner stranded on second base Drake Goodman up to bat. Goes him a strike right down the middle. Tries to go with that outside fastball. Can't locate it there. Ooh, that pitch was way outside the zone. Got him swinging. And that's going to be popped up. Looks like Larry Smith should be able to make the catch, and he does as Tommy Tedson. He's up to bat. He has a 2 2 2 average with no home runs and four RBIs on the season. As he swings at that one late, hits it foul. Tries to go with that curve ball. Ooh, perfect. Looked like a two-seamer. Inside corner of the plate hits this one to Soto. 
Throws it across the diamond for out number two. As Ronan Pruitt is up, and it looks like Davenport is slowly starting to get back in his groove in today's game. Let's see how far he can make it in this one. He only has 21 pitches thus far. Holds that one's just a little low. Goes to that same low pitch. Let's see if he can battle back here. Got a full count. And throws the curve. Amazing diving play by Owens. Can he get the out? Yes, he can. Dan Owens. Amazing diving play there, stopping the base hit. As we go to the bottom of the second inning, Brandon Soto up to bat, 246 average, seven home runs, and 25 RBIs. Takes a slider in there for a strike. Ooh, he hits that one very hard, but just swung a bit early. Cranked that one foul. 2-2 Two -two count to Soto. Ooh, just jammed him. And that is going to be caught by the center fielder, Garrett Strickland, for out number one as Hoya needs up. 320 average, 10 home runs, 25 RBIs, leads the team in home runs. Like I said, this man came out of nowhere and just started dropping nukes all over the place. And uh, they're glad that uh, they started to bring him back in the lineup as he gets struck out there. But uh, yeah, with Hoya Neat, they're glad they brought him back in the lineup. That He was benched for a while and uh, really wanted to prove himself. And he definitely did. He leads the, league, or leads the team in home runs now. As this is going to be a quick bottom of the inning as that's grounded to the shortstop for out number three. As we go to the top of the third, both teams only have one hit. We might have ourselves a pitcher's duel in today's game. We might have to see. We might have to see as Davenport tosses a strike and is quickly getting back into work. And 0-2 count pops this one up. That should be an easy out. Boston makes the catch, and just like I was saying before, that ball was lightly hit, and it was already near the warning track, so... You don't have to be a power hitter to hit a home run in this stadium, especially if you hit it to that right field side. As this one's going to be caught by Magic Richardson for out number two. Both pitchers have been uh, just quickly making easy work of all the batters, except for Lover Fervor, who cranked that oppo home run. Just barely got it over that wall. And he hits oppo again this time. Foul. See if he can strike him out this time. And just staying in there. Tries to get him with the inside pitch. And that's going to be dunked in for a hit. So both hits for the Philosophers belong to Lover. As Leon, Lee, Line, Leone, Lionel Esposito is up to bat as he takes a ball. Ooh, great curveball. Just barely got that by the knees. 2-1 uh, count. Davenport typically doesn't throw a lot of walks, so let's see if he can get the strike out here. 2-2 two, two count. Two outs. Runner on first. Let's see if he steals. He does not steal. That's actually going to be line. That should advance the runner to third base. Boston launches it. He got an arm, but he's just going to toss it to second. As runners are on the corners now for Garrett Strickland. He has contact against right-handed pitching, so this could be a very dangerous at-bat. Very important at-bat to pad the lead. Let's see if Davenport pitches around him. And he gets the called strike there. 2-2 two -two count again with two outs and two runners on. And that was ball three, but he's just trying to stay in there. Hmm, full count. Runner is going to be advancing to second. And that is going to advance the runner. Runner's going to third. Magic has an arm and doesn't throw it to third base. And I'm surprised Davenport didn't catch that. It wasn't a very hard hit ground ball. Just went right under his legs. Hmm, that was a pitch out there. They thought he was going to be stealing. Another pitch out. I don't know if they're trying to intentionally walk him. No, not trying to intentionally walk him. And that's going to be a walk 
Probably a smart choice, though. He did have a lot of power. <clears throat> Excuse me. As uh, James Davenport, James Davenport's whip finally hits a 1.0. It's been uh, under 1.0 for quite some time. Not having his best outing, but if he can get out of this jam with only giving up one run, pretty successful inning in my opinion, as he has a 2-2 count. And that should get out of the inning. I don't know how far it is outside. He makes the catch. Owens jumping. That ball was going to go in the stands. What a amazing play by Dan Owens to get out of the inning as Dan Owens is actually up at bat. Oh, my goodness. Dan Owens took away that foul ball, and uh, he grounds this one to second base. But my goodness, if the Foxes can come back in today's game, that was a very crucial moment right there. Because who knows what was going to happen. Davenport was looking a little bit shaky that inning, and uh, Owens came in a clutch defensively as Boston is up. And Warren Griffith is locked in now. So very uh, lopsided. I didn't think uh, Griffith was going to be pitching so solidly today. I mean, it's only three innings thus far. But we have another quick inning. Foxes are just swinging at everything. As we go to the top of the inning. Speaking of swinging at everything, philosophers are doing the same thing as they pop that up to Soto. As the catcher, Rowan and Pruitt was swinging at the first pitch, but it's a swing and a miss. Strike right down the middle. See if he can get that change up. And it looked like he was going with the change up, but he managed to hit it the other way. Tries to end it with a curveball. Cannot do so. Goes fastball. Hits it to Neat. Neat throws it across to Diamond. Owens makes the catch for out number two as Timber Jones is up. Foxes have a lot of game left to catch up. Just hoping that uh, they can get some sort of rally going in one of these innings. Foxes are typically known for their late game uh, rallies as Magic just barely catches that. Thought it was going to hit the ground, but two, three, and four hitters coming up for the Foxes. Pretty dangerous part of that lineup, especially with Larry Smith being locked in. He has the only hit today for the Foxes, and it almost wasn't a hit. The left fielder just couldn't grab it as he's in a 1-1 count. And swings at a ball in the dirt. Tips it foul. Line just in the reach of the second baseman for out number one. Magic Richardson up. Still trying to maintain that, I believe, league leading average. And he swings at the first pitch. And he drops it. He drops the ball. That's a crucial error as McGuffin is up. Let's see what they can do with that error. Magic Richardson might try to steal. And as I say, that's exactly what he's doing. And he makes it to second base. Good steal attempt. Stealing again. And he's in there. Just going all around. Line. That should bring him home. So look at that. The runner on first manages to make it home because he stole second and then immediately stole third. So Fox is already climbing back in this one. So great running, and that's going to be bounced off the second baseman's glove. I believe they're going to call that one a hit and not an error because of how difficult the play would have been to make as Hoya needs up. Has been very clutch lately, so let's see if he can show some of that clutch here. Struck out in his last at-bat. Ooh, that's going to advance the runner. Maybe. Oh, no, Soto. He hesitated once the ball went past the catcher. Honestly, that was a great play by the catcher to get Soto. Caught him lacking. He uh, kind of hesitated when the ball dropped out of his glove. And that hesitation right there is what messed him up. As Davenport already has 75 pitches 
Not a solid pitch count for only five innings of work. Grounded to Guayanit, throws it a first for out number one. Davenport looking to have himself a relatively quick inning. But with Lover Fervor up, uh, kind of hitting him both times and almost has a two home run game because that could have been out of here because of how short that porch is. 0-2, can he get the strike out here? And he will get him out as Boston makes the catch. Lionel Esposito's up, he's one for two. It was like, like a two-seamer right down the middle. Oh, that looked like a changeup. Goes curveball, hits it to center field, high and deep, but Magic Richardson is just too fast out there in center field and just makes those plays look easy. You got to appreciate a, a solid fielder like Magic get into the ball when it matters as the Foxes have a chance to catch up here in the bottom of the fifth. This is grounded to Timber Jones, throws it across and makes the play as Alex Tyler's up, feeling a little bit tense. Ooh, high pitch, but they call it a strike. Try to go back to that high fastball, this time not called a strike, two and one. Pops it up, Foxes aren't getting very solid contact in today's game. <coughs> Excuse me. As Dan Owens is up, he's 0 for 1. Ooh, gets that slider in there. Goes back to the slider. 1 and 2. Back to the slider, past the third baseman. So, good piece of uh, hitting there for Owens. He was in a 1 2 count, emergency, emergency batting there. As Robles is up, he's 0 for 1. Hits this one to center field, but didn't get the meat of the bat as that is going to be out number three. And we move to the top of the sixth inning. Three, four, five hitters coming up for the Philosophers. Strickland is locked in, so this is going to be an interesting at bat. We have Strickland who is feeling locked in and Davenport who's feeling a little bit tired. So let's see how this one works out. Three and one. You might walk him. Or not. Good pitch. Got him to pop up on that curveball there. Literally right to him. And now Davenport's starting to feel locked in, but it might be a little bit too late for that. As uh, he's, uh, I believe that was his 90th pitch right there that he gave up for a hit. As he's back to being neutral, he was only locked in for one hitter, and that uh, hitter took him out of being locked in, and he's down 2-0. and 3-0, oh. and oh. he's looking to get a ground ball here. Gets a strike right down the middle. He has to just go right at him. Oh, that ball is crushed. And that might hit the second deck, and it bounces off the wall in the second deck. No doubt about that one. Honestly, I think they should have taken Davenport out after giving up that base hit, but uh, they did not as they'll probably take him out now. Might be a little too late for that as they bring in Miguel Almondo. That's who, I believe that's who they should have brought in once he gave up the hit. You know, he had 90, I believe it was 90-something pitches already. That should have been the Q2, but they didn't and uh, Almondo gives up a hit there. We already know with Almondo, he's a very contact-heavy pitcher. He doesn't really pitch for strikeouts. As you can see, he only has eight. But he does pitch for contact. And most of the time, it's hard contact, but it's directly right at fielders. As he gets a strikeout right there, great pitch. That lower corner of the zone right by the knees. I wonder how long they're going to keep in Almondo in today's game. They might make them go two innings, maybe three, as Dan Owens gets that and gets the out. So two runs given up because of the two-run home run. As Boston's up, he's 0 for 2. 
Fox is not trying to lose this game. This is a very winnable game, especially with a pitcher that had an ERA over five. Uh, when you looked at today's matchup, it seemed like a very solid win or a pretty easy win as Boston just sits there and gets struck out. But when you looked at this game on paper, he had a pitcher with, a, I believe he had a 5.8 ERA before the game started, going up against literally one of the best pitchers on the Foxes, better, even better than sinker baller uh, in terms of ERA and whip. But uh, not the best outing for for Davenport. Honestly, four runs isn't too bad if you think about it. If you, Four runs is pretty quality. Um... It's just this offense hasn't been able to do much here as they've been getting three outs relatively easily as uh, Magic works himself a walk as McGuffin's up. He's 0 for 2. He has an RBI. Let's see if Magic tries to do those steal attempts again. And he does. And he makes it somehow on the pickoff attempt. Not something you see every day. Two balls in the dirt. McGuffin looking to at least make this a one-run game. He can crank one out of here. Ooh, great pitch. 3-1. Ah, 3-2. and two. You got to swing the bat. But he does draw the walk. So good eye. Almost lost that one there. Soto's up. He had a single in his last at-bat. Looking to tie this game up right here. Oh, that's what he looked like exactly what he was trying to do there. Ball one, just under the knees. Two and one. Let's see if he can at least slap it the other way or slap a base hit. Oh, that ball was nowhere near the zone. Ah, just caught by the third baseman. Good hit by Soto. Just not hit hard enough or more down the line. As that was their inning to do something, and they did not do it. But they still got time. They got three innings left. Almondo still in today's game. As he throws another ball, 2-0. 3-0, that one looked like it hit the zone, but... Oh, that is crushed. There it goes off the wall. Magic Richardson plays it off the wall. That's going to be a leadoff double. As their dangerous lover fervors up 2-3. for three. Throws a curveball outside. Hmm, great pitch. Change up 79 miles an hour. Tries to go with the high fastball. Three and one. Might be pitching around him here. Don't want to take any chances. And that's going to be hit the other way. And the runner decides to go home. Might not be the best decision. And, yep, I already knew. On that one, that was a terrible decision with an arm like Bostain in right field. He throws out runners all the time as Owens actually stops the ball from going in the outfield and they still manage to get the out. They don't get the double play, but an out is an out, so a good play defensively. And a good play by Larry Smith to be paying attention to the ball. As Almondo's ERA continues to get better and better. And that's going to be out number three. So another solid inning by Almondo. As we go to the bottom of the seventh, Foxes have three more innings to get something done. And they only have three hits in today's game. Very unlike them. Losing to a pitcher who has been absolutely horrendous. As uh, that's going to be another out. Great play by the first baseman, but they just haven't been getting any luck with where they've been hitting the ball. And that's hit hard, but right to the left fielder once again. Not getting lucky with where they've been hitting the ball today. And that's going to be another quick inning as the Foxes just can't get anything done. They might keep in 
Well, Mondo for one more inning since he has 20 pitches. That's cranked. There it goes. And it's caught by Bostain. That was going to be out of here. Oh, my goodness, Bostain. Have yourself a defensive game, why don't you? That was going to be a home run. As I talk so much about how short that wall is, it would have easily cleared that wall. As we thank you for watching today's game. Uh, this one's popped up to second. As Neat makes the catch. Tommy Tedson. Almondo still uh, pitching very solidly in these innings. Doing a great job in relief to keeping these Foxes in the ball game as Almondo takes it, throws it at first. So Miguel Almondo is keeping them in the ball game. It's up to the offense, though, to do something. Haven't done absolutely anything in today's game. Three hits, and only one of those hits was an extra base hit. It was a double uh, by Larry Smith, but everything else not... Their best work, to say the least. Popped up, but foul. That, oh, that's the bad luck I'm talking about again. Would have easily cleared that, but the pitcher just great reflexes. Two and zero. Oh. Two and one right down the middle. 86 pitches. He might be able to pitch a complete game here. Might not even have to go to the bullpen with how well he's pitching. Look at that. Another hit. You know, Boston was ahead in that count and still couldn't do anything. Just great pitching today by Griffith. Just knowing where to pitch to these guys and what pitches just work against him. Larry Smith needs something going here. Maybe a home run. Or a walk. That works, too. Any runner is crucial, especially when Magic Richardson is locked in. He's dangerous. Ah, that's not good. In a situation like that, you shouldn't be running with two outs. You don't want to make the last out on the base paths. As uh, we go to the 7, 8, 9 hitters for the Philosophers. I'll be right back, folks. We'll keep the game going. Uh, they bring in Dino Wink, but uh, we're going to let this play out, and I'll be right back. Okay, folks, I'm back. I did see as I was leaving that the first batter that wing faced, the ball was absolutely crushed to that short area of the field. And that, Philosophers, honestly, have been not abusing, but they have been uh, using that part of the field to their advantage today's game. Every single home run went that direction. As it looks like they're going to easily swing and get this win today, 5-1, to one, unless they have some sort of late-game heroics. But with the batting, with the offense in today's game, they just don't look like they're woken up. Let's hope it's, uh, let's hope they don't start slumping from here. I believe, I'm trying to think who the next starting pitcher is going to be. It might be Apollo Ortega. Which, uh, with Ortega, he's been pitching pretty well lately, but it's usually a gamble with him if you're going to get a win or a loss. It's, it's tough with him. That's a good strikeout, but uh, they do get one on the home run. They get 10 hits today. 
So it's up to three, four, and five. Magic Richardson getting the bat again as they bring in Dewey Correa, a relief pitcher, not their closer, but a relief pitcher. Oh, that was not a strike, but okay. He's a two-pitch pitcher, so you're either getting one or the other. As Magic works himself a walk. Let's hope he doesn't try to steal and get caught on the base paths. He almost did last time, but managed to beat it. Hmm, outside pitch. McGuffin likes that outside pitch, but didn't go for it. Hmm, two and one. No double plays. That's going to be a base hit. That's going to put runners on first and second now. They're looking to rally here. One for three, Brandon Soto. If a home run wasn't given up last inning, a home run here would have tied the game. Let's see what they can do here. Hmm, one and one. Let's see if he can battle for a walk. Ah, high fastball. Oh, that's going to go past the third baseman. I don't know how he didn't get that. Runner is going to be heading home. That should score him. Soto clutch hitting with a 1-2 count. Leonid up. Always dangerous, especially when he doesn't have a hit. Can he tie this game up? That's going to be a base hit. Runner's going to go to third. He's heading home. Runner throws it, and he's in there. 5-3 ball game. They're probably going to take him out. There's no way they're going to keep him in after this. Yep, they bring in the closer. Bo Bernard also has a high ERA, 5.57. Oh, my goodness, folks. Can we get the ninth inning comeback? Can he draw the walk? Oh, my goodness. There it goes. Looking up at the wall. <laughs> it's out of here. The Foxes come all the way back. And his... <laughs> Alex Tyler's ninth home run, 32nd RBI, and they win. They score it all. They saved all that offense for the end of the game. Oh my goodness, folks. I thought this game was as good as done with all the not hitting they were doing the entire game. They only had three hits, I think. And uh, once they took out that starting pitcher, it went all downhill for them. And Alex Tyler being the hero. Oh my God, this might be this might be one of the best games I think I've seen for the Foxes. The Foxes don't normally hit a lot of walk-offs. This might have actually been the first walk-off home run for the Foxes as uh, Bernard takes the loss giving up that home run to end the game. I see why they don't put in Bernard in closing situations. They brought in Correa, but even Correa couldn't do it. Funny thing is, folks, Correa and Bernard didn't get one out. Every single batter got a hit or they got on base. As uh, you can see there, Correa, he didn't uh, get out of the inning. He gave up three hits and four earned runs with that walk. As the loss, like I said, goes to Bernard, giving up a hit. And that one hit was the game ender as uh, Dino Wink gets the win. But what an amazing performance by Miguel Almondo. Let's not forget, he threw two and two-thirds innings, only giving up three hits. And he didn't give up any runs. His ERA is a 1.54, one of the best, uh, he's one of the best relievers on the team right now, so... Wow, I have nothing to say. Uh, I did not expect this at all. Lover Fervor gets player of the game, getting three for four with a home run and an RBI and two runs as uh, Griffith gets the second player of the game. Well-deserved, honestly. Eight innings pitched, three hits, three walks, and two strikeouts as uh, his efforts were wasted due to the terrible relief. Alex Tyler gets the third player of the game. Only got one hit. But that was the one hit that mattered as the Fighting Foxes walk this one off in amazing fashion and win this one 6-5. to five. Have a great night, everybody.